Hi, and welcome back to Psychology with me, Mr. Snyder, and today we're starting another exciting chapter on memory. And now today we're going to be talking about memory classification and the memory stages or processes. So let's begin. Our learning targets for today, we will list and describe the three different types of memory. We'll analyze how the encoding of memory uh, works, which is the first stage. We'll explain the processes of memory storage. We'll talk about memory retrieval, which is the third process. And we will describe problems in a real world scenario with uh, eyewitness testimony and Elizabeth Loftus's research on the subject. So let's define memory first. If you want a textbook definition, since we all have a concept of what memory is, memory is the process by which we recollect or recollect prior experiences and information and skills learned in the past. So just remembering things, but there are different things that we remember that go along with different types of memory. We have experiences, we have skills, we have information. Those are all different types of memory that we use. Uh, first off, in the kinds of memory, there's episodic memory. It's a specific um, event, and you have lots of episodic memories, just like a television episode you remember. Episodic memory is a memory of a specific event. And a specific type of episodic memory is a flashbulb memory. And a flashbulb memory is kind of like the flash on a camera. It's an important and intense event, like a lot of older adults remember where they were when Kennedy was shot. Everyone remembers when, where they were when the terrorist attacks of 9-11 were happening, uh, more, now less so because of the kids that I teach were now just in kindergarten and even younger. So that is a flashbulb memory. A semantic memory is facts and words and concepts. and these are both examples of what is called explicit memory, and that's memory of specific information. The episodes are information, and the semantics are information. Implicit memory is things that are not in clearly stated. So th these are your skills and your learned habits, like brushing your teeth and riding a bike. These are things that will stay with you for a lifetime. You probably could get on a bike and ride it even if you haven't done it in years because that stays with you um, even if you don't use it very often. Encoding is the first stage of memory and that is when we translate the information coming into our sensory inputs into a form which it can be used. Um, and we use three types of codes for this. The two, the two things that we use the most are visual and acoustic. Visual codes are when we form mental pictures of things. Acoustic codes are when we use sound. And then semantic codes are codes that make sense when they are in terms of their meaning or their context. So if I were to say every good boy does fine, you would say, what are you talking about? But if you are a musician, you would know that that represents the lines on a musical staff. Every good boy does fine. Roy G. Biv would think that's your friend, but if it's not and you are an artist or a uh, science major studying light, you would know that Roy G. Biv is the colors of the rainbow. My very educated mother just served us noodles, no Pluto anymore. So um, it used to be nine pizzas for me, but now it's just noodles. Shame, Pluto had to get kicked out of the planet circle. The second stage is storage, and it's how we maintain encoded information. And there's different ways we can do this. There is the maintenance rehearsal versus elaborative rehearsal. Maintenance rehearsal is just saying something over and over until it sticks in order to keep it from forgetting. If I gave you a phone num number to remember, uh, if you kept saying it over and over and over, you would you could probably remember it, but the problem is is that it doesn't connect it to anything. It's just a phone number floating around in your head. It's a poor way to put information into permanent storage. If you want it to if you want to remember something, you need to relate it to prior information. 
and information you already know. That is called elaborative rehearsal. It's widely used in education. We don't just start doing geometry. We build upon everything that you already know in math. And so that is storage, maintenance rehearsal, and elaborative rehearsal. So our organizational systems in our head, we'll talk about this next time, but it's kind of like a computer. So we, we arrange them in our mind into schemas, into things that we can use later on. And it's like a storehouse of these files and file folders on our computers. And we store and learn what we need and want to remember. And we classify those things according to common features. Um, but storage is subject to error just like everything else. And if we can't remember something, it's probably because we filed it incorrectly. And then the third stage of memory is retrieval. Retrieval is finding what we stored and returning it back to conscious thought or what we call our working memory, which we'll talk about next time. It's the third stage of processing information. We have two types of memories and those that are context dependent and state dependent. Context dependent memories are more easily retrieved when we are in the same context or situation in which it was encoded and stored. So you going back to your elementary school, if you were to step into the elementary school, you'd probably remember a lot of memories that you haven't thought of in years that are obviously there, but they are more easily retrievable because you are in the same context as you were when you stored them. Memories that are retrieved because the mood in which they were originally encoded is recreated is a state dependent memory and it's better retained when people are in the same mood as when the information was acquired. Lastly, the tip of the tongue experience is um, trying to retrieve a memory that is not very well organized. You, you almost can remember it and it's the feeling of knowing experience. That's when something is on the tip of your tongue but you just can't retrieve it. Here is an overview and quick facts of the three basic memory processes. Let you read over those. Go ahead and pause. And current research in psychology, a very famous uh, psychologist named Elizabeth Loftus has um, already been doing a lot of research for the past 30 years on eyewitness memory. Misleading details can be planted into a person's memory for an event that actually occurred. It is also possible pl to plant entirely false memories, according to Loftus and Bernstein. Loftus has shown that false memories exist and also that there's a feeling, if you're feeling sure about a memory, it does not prove that the memory is a reliable one. There can also be false memories. Um, it's source confusion. A lot of times if you're getting memories from different sources, then you can mix them together actually and have one entirely new memory combining two memories. Psychological research is helping to train police investigators to avoid using interviewing techniques that can mislead witnesses. So um, witnesses can be misled. You can get anybody to believe they did anything if with a long enough pressure and uh, holding them. And this is a problem because we're putting people away for life on some of these eyewitness testimonies and they're not even true. So this is something that definitely has to be dealt with, and thanks to Elizabeth uh, Loftus, we are um, able to study it and research it. So let's review our learning targets. We talked about the three different kinds of memory, the episodic, semantic, and implicit. And I'm going to be talking a lot about types of memory and um, processes of memory and stages of memory. There's many different ways to classify it, and we just need to keep them all straight. And we talked about the first stage of encoding, the second stage of storage, and the third stage of retrieval, or I guess I should say process. And we also talked about the problems with eyewitness testimony. And so that is all for today. And next time we'll get into the stages of memory, like um, sensory, short-term, and long-term. And I'll see you then. Have a good night. Bye.